Hello. Good evening. Can can you hear me? No. Hello. Hello. If 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 anyone can hear me, could you could you say hello? hello? Great. It seems like someone can hear me. Um, now, uh, this will be uh, a little bit like going back to school. Uh, so we need to arrange a little bit of a classroom here in front of the desk. So if you could all move forwards on your chairs uh, and, and form, form a sort of uh, little classroom here. That, then ev everything would be uh, uh, much better. Um, and in the meanwhile, um, I will uh, I will get a cup of coffee and then we can start. Thank you very much. The performance hasn't started yet, but it will start soon. Thank you. So we're starting now. of the music Good. It, what was it should it be louder Did you want us to dance or? but it that it seems like by by uh, uh, that reaction it, it should it could be louder then we start dancing. Uh, 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 that's not what we're discussing uh, <laughs> and I'm only uh, I'm only talking to one one voice here uh, uh, okay it, it was good, okay, thank you. Like, it, is there any sound from these speakers here? Yeah. 
Yeah, okay, because I, I don't hear anything.
It, it's the sound guy here. Lu Lu Manon. Is he here? Uh, can you can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Yeah. If you can hear me, say hello. hello. Uh, the sound technician. The sound technician. He is not here anymore. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to do uh, a radical thing. Just stay where you are. Uh, I did the radical thing. Um, uh, it was quite easy. I, I disconnected. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, hello. hello. Oh. There you go. Um, there was a feedback problem uh, before. Uh, maybe you could hear it. Um, and because there, there are these monitors, um, which which are good, but because I can hear what is going on. Uh, but then the signal f goes into the microphone again, and then there's uh, there's feedback. Um, uh, could could someone uh, go to the bar and, and get me a cup of coffee? Uh, one maybe some person who's uh, who's close to the bar. And and can you still hear me? Yeah? Say hello. Hello, okay. So now we can start. Um, yeah. Um, and um, uh, there was a, a person here uh, speaking earlier about dancing. Uh, sitting about there? Yeah, uh, don't be sorry. Audience participation, we love it. Um, uh, are you a native speaker of English? You're not a native speaker, okay, but you can speak English. Um, is someone getting coffee? Yeah. Some coffee is coming. Uh, black without sugar, no milk, um, no sugar. Uh, thank you. And and, and 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 a club mate as well. Uh, put it on my my credit. Um, okay, it's coming. Great. Uh, okay, the person who's not a native speaker but who can speak English. Okay. Um, who uh, uh, and and uh, could you get a club mate as well? A club mate. Yeah, C L U B M A T E. Um, it's what everyone is drinking in, in Berlin, so they can keep dancing. Uh, now, you who's not a, a native speaker, uh, uh, would you like to present us to... Would you, would you like to say your name? My name? Yeah. It's Kaolin. Kaolin. Oh, it's you! <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know you speak, spoke so good English. Oh, well... You fooled me there for a while. <laughs> uh, Okay. Hello. How are you doing? It, it's a long time since. Yes, it is. Yeah. How, how is it going? <laughs> it's going very well. It's going very well. Yeah, okay. I see you still drink coffee. Uh, yeah. Have you quit? Uh, no. No. Okay. I stay with good you stay with good quality. This is not good quality. This is trucker coffee, but it's it it do, it does its job, so to say. Um, and uh, how uh, have, have you gotten married? No, but 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 you 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 seem to speak with the sort of possession of mind that you know things are settled. Oh. Yeah, right. but maybe in your case, not being married is the way that things should be settled. Should it be settled? You don't have to speak about this. No, okay, okay. You're you're doing well. You're doing well. I'm glad to hear it. Um, I'm not doing well. I'm not doing well, um, but we shouldn't speak about that. Uh, we should speak about disco. <clears throat> um, now, there's just one thing, Carolina. 
and that is there are spotlights here. There are spotlights, and that means that I can I can see I can see nothing. I can see I, I just see a black nothing. I hear your voice from there, and could you just tell me how many people are left in the audience? This is good to know. <laughs> I, I will be honest and say that it's more than 20. It's more than 20? Okay. Uh, thank you, every more than 20, all of you, I mean not every, all of you uh, in the more than 20 group for, for being with us. It's been a long, it's been, um, a long um, evening and uh, uh, with a lot of uh, performances uh, and a, a lot of uh, talk about performances and a lot uh, of talk about performance. Uh, and, uh, and you're still here, uh, waiting patiently for me to start. And uh, that's very kind of you. Um, I beg your pardon? Um, I, I, I don't think, as I can recall, that I've said anything about disco yet. Uh, but I will, I will. Um, uh, I, I, and, and this is a most informal event. You know, we're, it's, I mean, it's a school-like setup, uh, and, uh, and still, you don't, have to, you don't have to behave as nice as you did in school, if you behave nice, um, but most of you who are here, face it, are middle class. People who come to these kind of cultural events for free are middle class. Um, um, so you probably behave nice in school, and you don't have to behave nice here. Um, that is, if you have anything to say, if you have a reaction, um, uh, please speak out. Uh, don't raise your arm, because I will not be able to see it, just speak out. Um, Thank you. That's half. That's half the year. Half half the year. Um, and uh, I could connect that to the fact that it's the 29th of February today, but I don't know how. Um, I I have been traveling a little bit lately, and uh, and uh, at. Um, I've been traveling a bit lately. lately. And uh, now, uh, how many of you here are involved in performance art in some kind of way? Raise your arm. <laughs> Carolina, how many raised their arms now? Okay, that's a lot of people. Um, 13. Yeah. And, and, and now I hear, I also hear the voice of the performance expert from the United Kingdom. Uh, what's your name, Matthew? Christopher. Christopher? 50% admit their part. Okay, yes. Um, you know, people talk about psychoanalysis as as uh, as the talking cure you you go to the psych psychoanalyst psycho psychoanalysis the shrink you go to the shrink <laughs> you go to the shrink and you lie down and you speak and the shrink listens um and this in itself is fantastic because maybe maybe you go to the shrink because you felt when you were a child that your parents didn't have time to listen to you then. And then you were, you was a little bit sad. Uh, and now you have to go to therapy for a few years. Maybe. Uh, at least they, they talk about it as, as the talking cure. And, and what the talking cure is about is that somehow you feel that um, that there's some kind of overload of information on your mind, and by speaking it out, it seems like this burden somehow leaves you. You know, it's like going around with a backpack, heavy, 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 and then you take it off. 
Um, and even just taking it off for a while is, is nice. And I, I got to think about this because I've been traveling for a little bit and I've been in countries where I didn't understand the language. And then I came back to Copenhagen yesterday and today I sat in a cafe and tried to figure out what I should say today. And I found it impossible to concentrate because I could understand what people were saying. The rest, the other people in the cafe, and, and they, they were unloading information on each other. Um, 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 um. Um, and and it's, it, it, was, it was a little bit like, you know, hiding, hiding in the cupboard in the office of the shrink and hearing someone speak. Uh, things I shouldn't hear. And it's because I've been traveling and I've been so used to being in cafes and just hearing language that I couldn't understand. And now I didn't have that privilege. I could hear what people were saying. Do you follow? Yes. Yes, good. It's good if you make a little bit of sound, you know, some kind of emotional reaction. <laughs> uh, so that I know that you follow. A bigger pun? Living. Oh, oh, what? Living. Living. That you're alive. <laughs> it seems like the wavelength is not coordinated here. Um, but I, I'll, hope, I'll hope we'll fix it. So I've been traveling and uh, and uh, I had to pay a bill with the internet bank. And now I'm, I'm one of these persons who have to go to, go, to, go to the shrink or go to a cafe and speak to another person and unload information because I find information can be very, very stressful. And, and especially when it comes from a computer and especially when it's financial information, and especially if it's information about my own finances, and also operating machines that I'm not quite sure how they're working, I find that also stressful. And that combination of expecting information, expecting financial information, expecting financial information about my own finances, and trying to operate the mechanisms of the secure login of the Internet Bank. This is an explosive combination of stress to me. But I was going to pay a bill, I had to pay a bill uh, to someone who I owed money and who expected the money. And, and I managed to log onto the Internet Bank and bam! All my money was gone. Um, and it was like a serious bunch of money that I thought I would be able to survive on for like six, seven, eight months. They were gone. And uh, a few months ago, I was the victim of a, a card scam, like many other people living in Denmark. There had been a gang from Venezuela who had put some like very sophisticated scanners into uh, the, the uh, ATM machines and, and suddenly, you know, money from my bank account had gone to Venezuela. But it wasn't that much money because there, there are mechanisms in the system that stops it. Um, and I also read that there had been a virus that actually could just, you know, make your money disappear without not even your card having been scanned. I'm sure you've heard about these things, right? Thank you. So I thought, oh my dear, this, 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 now, now I'm, I'm a victim of the big scam. scam. Um, um, and, and, you know, I, I looked and da 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 But uh, then I found out that what had happened was that, now, as I told you, information stresses me and financial information stresses me. And especially information about my own finances stresses me. And the result of that is that for the, the last, I think, seven, eight years, I haven't done my taxes. 
And, and, and of course, the tax people, they're not completely happy about this. And, and I've had some serious talks with the tax people. Um, and I've said, you know, I'm very sorry about this. I'd, I'd, I'd like to try to do something about it. And, and then I've tried to do something about it, but it, it, it made me really stressed. Um, so in, in, in the end, I didn't. Um, so now they, they, they just emptied my account, boing. Um, which, of course, they're, they're in their right to do. Uh, I can't be bitter about it. Um, but this made me a little bit bitter. No, it didn't make me bitter, because I couldn't be bitter. But it made me a little bit worried. It made me a little bit worried about this performance. Because I, I wasn't, um, I was, you know, I was traveling. And I thought that, OK, if they've emptied my bank account, uh, then they probably also emptied my apartment. Um, and if they've emptied my apartment, they've taken my records. Um, which, which is uh, a big collection that I've been collecting since uh, 1976, when I bought my first album, which was an album with The Sparks, uh, which uh, all of you here are too young to remember. Um, Um, and it, it's quite a lot of records, and, and uh, it's, you know, I don't know, four or five thousand records. And of course I wondered how, how will this disco lecture go without records? So it was, uh, I, I, it was with, uh, um, it was with interest that I returned to my apartment last night uh, to see what had happened. And uh, I got in, and uh, I saw on the bed there was a little letter uh, from the tax office saying, Hello, Olaf, we've been here. Uh, you weren't here. And uh, da -da -da, da -da -da. But they had touched nothing. They hadn't touched nothing. All the records were there. Everything was there. Um, there was even money on the table. You know, there, there, there were 13 kroner on the table. They hadn't touched that. Um, so instead they went to my bank account and, you know, took what was there. I think, I think they, would, they felt it was like bad style to, you know, to grab someone's money in an apartment. You know, that only thieves do that. You know, taking it from the bank account is okay. Um, so, um, that, that about that. And uh, now we can start. March 25, 1939, Adolf Hitler, the German dictator, signed a law that every German boy between the ages of 14 and 18. Uh, now I need the, the expert in performance who is collecting videos. Where are you? He's gone. Okay. He went to the bathroom. He went to the bar. Okay. Uh, do we have any other native speaker here? Is it ages or age? I think it's age, between the age 14 and 18. Yes. Age. age. But it's two different ages, it's 14 and 18. <laughs> okay, well, I, I, I have a feel that it's age. And if you see him come back, we'll ask him. Every boy between the age of 14 and 18 had to join the Hitler Jugend, the Hitler Youth. And every girl between the age 14 and 18 had to join the Bund Deutsche Mädel, the German Association for Girls. But in Hamburg, there was an answer to this. And 
This answer was named Swingjugend, swing kids. So what these kids did in Hamburg in the late 30s was that they would dress in like English, English fashion, like tweed, um, and the girls would have long, long hair um, and makeup, and sometimes the boys would have a, an umbrella, um, and they would have an umbrella because the British foreign minister, Anthony Eden would have an umbrella. So this, these, these, all these like fashion signals were a sign of resistance. And they would gather secretly and they would uh, have a portable gramophone, a record player, and they would listen to American jazz and swing records. Uh, swing is a sort of jazz. American jazz records and they would dance to it. Very dangerous, but they did it. And this was the birth of the modern club disc jockey. You would have disc jockeys that of course played records on the radio, but playing records on the radio was sort of like for me performing here. You know, you wouldn't know quite who you were performing to because you, because you couldn't see them. Um, and there would also be disc jockeys that would have uh, played record, records at parties before. Um, but it would have just, you know, been the hits or it would have just been to his close circle of friends. Um, sound and the, the output goes into your PA system with these two cables yeah. and I think it's somewhere in the other end there's a problem um, and uh, can you still hear me yeah. yes. okay I'll continue to speak uh, so this was the bath of the DJ it was a person who played records to a peer group and they were dancing to it. And uh, this phenomenon with the swing kids, this spread all over Germany. And it spread to Prague. And it spread to Vienna. And it spread especially to Paris, where the swing kids would be called Zazus, which is a nonsense word that comes from uh, Cab Calloway, who was a swing artist. And on Sundays, these swing kids, they would gather in bars and restaurants, and they would have a portable record player with them, and American jazz records, 
and they would dance. Eventually, there would be underground nightclubs where there would be a record player connected to a sound system and people would come and drink whiskey and listen to American jazz records and dance to them and just in general try to ease out of the fact that they were living under occupation. In 42, the Jews in France had to start wearing the yellow Star of David with the text Jew written on it. And some of these sassous, as a sort of ironic making fun of this, which they thought was like Nazi kitsch, they would start wearing the yellow star of David. And then it would be written on it, Sassu, or Swing. And of course, looking at it from our perspective, um, that's a little bit maybe bad taste. And looking from our perspective, um, maybe it wasn't that smart. And uh, towards the end of 1942, and in 1943, Swing kids in Germany and Sassus in France were arrested by the Nazis and put into work camps. But as the war went on, the Nazis had other things to worry about. So these underground nightclubs, they became like a little bit more open. Um, they didn't have to be so secret anymore. And there we then had the birth of the discotheque. So if the DJ emerged in Hamburg in the late 30s, the discotheque was born in Paris in the early 40s. Everything clear until now? Thank you. And as you might be able to hear the word Discotheque um, is a French word. And you can compare it to bibliothèque. So a discotheque is a space for a collection of records. Like a bibliothèque, a library, is a space for a collection of books. So the record, the disc, is in, in the center. Yeah? yeah? Yes. So the discotheque, the disco, what later simply was called the club, is a place where rituals take place that circle around the record, the disc. Now, is it really silly that I carry the microphone? <laughs> Like, <laughs> and, 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 but we, I, I'm recording this, and you see, uh, ah, yeah, because he, he pulled out this thing, my recording is fucked up. Thank you. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, 
the discotheque, yes. Uh, a ritual around the disc. That's where we were. And We're used to that all the inventions uh, of the modern entertainment industry is coming from America. So we must ask ourselves, why did the discotheque come from Europe? Why was it invented in Paris? Right? And the reason is that in America you could just go, you know, to a bar and hear like real live jazz musicians play. Yeah. And this was not this was not possible uh, in Europe. So in Europe there there was there 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 emerged the cult of the record. Right? So, so it's, it's a difference between having a religion where there are gods and, and you can be directly involved with the gods um, and, and that's, that, that's what you could do in America. But in Europe we had to make do with the Bible. Yeah? You get it. Any questions so far? <laughs> I'm, I'm completely off the track now. Uh, uh, yeah. Are we going to discuss this afterwards? Uh, there will be no discussion. <laughs> there will be no discussion. So you don't have to worry, you don't have to worry about what you're going to say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One, a uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, applause for the technician. Hey! Hey! I'm so, I, I, like, I thought, how long will I have to stand here and be stuck in Paris? The records that we heard before I started was first MFSB, Love is the Message. Secondly, from 1974. Second, we heard Eddie Kendrick's Girl, You Need to Change, Girl, You Need a Change of Mind from 1972. And finally, Sly and the Family Stone Dance to the Music from 1969. Now, disco music is, of course, unique and fantastic in a great many ways. And one of the interesting things with disco music, to me at least, is that it's the first music that is talking about itself, not only as a kind of music, because we had that before, we had swing songs that were about swing. And we had twist songs that were about twist. But with disco, you'll actually have songs that not only are about disco, but is talking about the disco thing as a social experience. And we can sort of hear this in, in Dance to the Music. Um, uh, the, the band, it, we, like, one would say that, you know, disco emerges as something that you can identify as disco in sort of 1973, maybe, 72. Uh, but already in 69, Sly and the Family Stone 
is singing a song about how the how they're gonna exercise their music in order to make people dance. You're with me. Um, and 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 later on there'll be disco songs about going down to the disco. You're in a bad mood, but then you go down to the disco, and there's music and friendly people, and you're dancing your blues, blues away. It's time for another record. And uh, the middle one you heard, Girl, You Need a Change of Mind, from 72, there we're like, we're on our way to disco. The one before, Love's Message, there we have disco. And now I'm going to play a record from 1973, which I would say, this, this is the first disco record. And it's with Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes, and it's a song called The Love I Lost. Is there anyone who knows the song? No. Doesn't matter, you're going to hear it. And this song was recorded in Philadelphia on Philadelphia International Records, which was a very important company for the birth of the disco sound. And they had a studio band, a group of musicians that would play on most of the records that were produced for this record company. And this band was called MFSB. Um, so they're playing on, on this, uh, this first song we heard. And at the core of this band, there were three musicians. Earl Young, who played the drums, James Baker, who played the bass, and Norman Harris, who played rhythm guitar. And this was at the time when you, you had gotten multi-track recording. You know what multi-track recording is? Yeah, it's a tape recorder which can, which can, which can uh, record more than one channel of sound. And usually when you talk about multi-track recording, you talk even more, you t talk even, you know, about more than two channels. Two channels is stereo, right? And this happened, like, in the 50s it started to happen, and the 60s it, you know, happened more. And in the end of the 60s, it really started to happen. Like, but, but at the time of the recording of Sgt. Pepper, that was still you know, a very sophisticated production, but that was, you know, that was made only on four tracks. Four tracks. Um, and then they recorded four tracks and mixed them together and put them like another track and da 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 da. Uh, but by the end of the 60s and beginning of, of the 70s, you, you had like 24 tracks. And when I grew up in Sweden, you know, no one liked disco uh, because people thought it was commercial and machine-like and not real like rock music was and da 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 da. But I liked disco. Um, and of course, the reason why I'm standing here and talking about uh, disco here now 30 years later, 35 years later, 40 years later, um, <laughs> not 50, um, was that, that, of course, I was traumatized. You know, I was traumatized by, you know, being that one kid who liked disco among all these people who liked rock. So now I'm speaking to you about disco, you know, the talking cure. And uh, you know, one of the accusations of, of disco was like it was like made by machines. Uh, but this is not true. This is not true. And 
these three people, the drummer, the bass player, and the rhythm guitarist, they would always record the rhythm tracks live together. And James Baker, the bass player, he would sit slightly behind to the side of Earl Young. So he could watch the bass drum and then he would sync his bass playing with the bass drum. So you would get like this thing, this rhythm that really moved forward. And then Harris, he would fill in with rhythm things uh, in between. And there was this song with Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes, which was written as a ballad. And they tried to record it and da 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 but they felt it, it wasn't swinging, it like, it didn't really work out. Uh, and then one of the musicians said that uh, maybe we should try playing it faster. So they did, and suddenly it worked. And in this process, Earl Young, the drummer, suddenly got this idea that, like, with disco, there is this boom, 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 boom uh, beat, basically. And uh, suddenly Earl got this idea to, like, fill it in um, with, like, playing on the hi-hat. Um, like a quicker beat. And this, when we listen to disco now, is you know really one of the characteristics of the disco sound. This and the love I lost was the first song where this ever appeared. So that's the birth of disco, uh, I would say. Um, so I, I will play it now before you know you'll start to leave and so on and so forth. Um, any questions so far? <laughs> no, I, I, I was I, I was still a bit off about this sound that uh, sound that disappeared, uh, but I'm sure everything will be okay. Just bear with me. It's, this is extremely, this is very, very exciting. Uh, uh, <laughs> Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes, The Love I Lost.
And um, then we had disco. Wonderful. Um, uh, Car Carolina, are you still here? How many people are there in the audience now? Uh, if it's 11, then you should say 11. It's 11. It's 11. Okay. Um. We were 13 within the performance field. Before. Uh, uh, yes. Um. Well, I think uh, then it, it's uh, time to round off the little uh, lecture here. And, and say thank you, uh, because it's been a long evening. And, uh, and uh, I've been uh, speaking quite a lot already. And of course, there are oceans of facts about disco, which I could continue and stand here to speak about. But then it would never end. And of course, we can't have that. So, what I thought of doing was instead of continue, to, continuing to speak, I'll just you know, play some more records. So, in that way, the lecture will continue through music. And I might even say, you know, the name of the record, uh, the artist, the title, the year. And if you 11 people would like to dance, uh, then you can do that. Um, uh, <clears throat> so I think this, this, is the, uh, this is the sensible way of rounding it off. Um, but before, I do that. Um, we're going to have a discussion. You said wait. No, that's not going to be a discussion. No. But maybe there was something you'd come. I mean, there are still 11 people left. And no. more in the bar. And more in the bar. If you and want to uh, no, no. Uh, also, I think I th th this was one of you know this was also one of the ideas I had with playing music because if I you know if, when I'm speaking now the people in the bar they're just irritated because you know I'm 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 disturbing you know what they're saying to each other but if I play music you know they'll, they maybe it's okay also for them um, and maybe even people from the bar will come and dance. Uh, what do I know? No, but but what what I wanted to address? I know this way of 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 of, of ending it is a bit abrupt. <laughs> um, but but I'm too nervous to continue. But maybe there was something like when you came here. And you thought, this is what I'd like to know. This is what I'd like to know about disco. Something that I haven't said, because of course, I haven't said so much. And if there's something specific, which we sort of could round off without using hours and hours on it, that is. Do you have any questions? about the difference between the saying much and talking much. The difference between the... Lots of talking and lots of saying. Uh, what the difference is between talking and saying. Uh, you stated that you talked a lot but you didn't say much. I don't remember. Uh, and uh, and this uh, uh, and and you would like to discuss the difference. <laughs> you would like to different 
the, discuss, the dis difference between talk and say. Uh, 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 but is there is this question relevant to 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 the subject of disco, or are you just asking it to make me nervous? Uh, I was already nervous, but this was a killer. <laughs> I'm, I'm Torchlager. I'm Torchlager. <laughs> you, you know, uh, you know, a hit like a hit record. You know, it's like a record that hits you. And and uh, Schlager is also, you know, it's 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 a it's a hit. Uh, How about the movement in your body when you listen to disco? I find that very interesting. Tell us about that. Uh, I, I don't know. I, 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 uh, I know I, if you only move your, your right, right foot, but not your left foot. I, I don't know what's going on. I have no connection to my body. <laughs> I, I have no connection to my body. Um, okay. I, I met someone uh, at my travel, in my travels here, uh, a few weeks ago. Someone I had met uh, nine years ago in, in Budapest. A person from Dresden. And uh, he said that I had said then to him that I didn't have a body, I'm a brain on legs. <laughs> um, and I didn't remember this, uh, but he said that I had said it. Uh, uh, I feel this is also a bit far from the subject. Is it? <laughs> Don't give us music. I'll give you music. I'll give you music. Um, and uh, uh, I will start with uh, playing a song called Casanova Brown um, by Gloria Gaynor and it's a great song and one of the great great things about it is the way it's mixed and it's mixed by the most fabulous mixer of disco music, um, who was called Tom Moulton. Uh, so when you started to get disco, uh, like suddenly you had these people who would know how you know a song worked on a dance floor. And that would be the DJ. It wouldn't be necessarily the musician, it wouldn't be the pr producer, or whatever. So suddenly you got like these DJs that were brought in to remix records. And Tom Mold wasn't really a DJ, uh, but he had uh, started out uh, his disco career by making tapes, by making mixtapes to a uh, Gay, a gay disco on, on Fire Island um, outside uh, New York. And uh, uh, anyways, the mixer, important. Tom Moulton, the most important mixer, although he wasn't quite a detail, he made tapes. Um, and the mix of this song is just fabulous. Uh, And with that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the, the, uh, the performance is over, and uh, I'll continue to play some music, some records for you, and uh, thank you very, very much for your patience.